Hi, everybody. We are here today with Ernesto Contreras. He's the head of business development for Dashcore Group. Ernesto, always a pleasure. How are you? Oh, Rodrigo. Thank you so much for having me again on your show. It's, it's a great pleasure to talk to you. Let us know a little bit what you've been up to lately and what information can you give us regarding uh, Dash overall? Yeah, well, it's been a very, very busy year for Dash overall. Um, it's, it's interesting because the COVID situation hit everyone on a personal level. But what happened is that digital work and digital businesses were pushed to grow much, much more than they would without the pandemic. You know, everybody being inside now, almost every business turning into digital. So, you know, we've had a lot, a lot of work. So basically, as you know, what, what, what we've done in business development is that we've done a lot of laser focus on the areas where we believe we can get the most growth. They, these areas are number one, trading, number two, Venezuela, and number three, we're continuing to pursue projects in the remittance and gaming areas. So the, this, the first two are like 80% of our time, and the last two are about 20%. So we've done a lot. Um, about a month ago, we announced uh, what is a fast pass trading network. And this means, you know, we've grown about 10 or 15 exchanges that accept instant send or chain locks. This means that you can send Dash in and out of the exchange within seconds or minutes in some cases. What this means is that if you're a professional trader and you see an opportunity of, you know, buying Bitcoin in one exchange and selling it in another for more money, you don't need to wait for the confirmation times of Bitcoin. You can send your Dash into the exchange where you can uh, uh, buy the Bitcoin cheaper and acquire there immediately. So we understood that there's a large opportunity there to... Uh, get you know there's about five to seven percent of all the volume that we've seen in exchanges that happens in arbitrage so we're giving traders this opportunity to you know capture that value and what this means is that it's not only about instant send it's also you know <clears throat> traders want to get leverage and they want to get loans traders also need to see how the price is performing so this means uh, net uh, information and tools for that. Traders also want to use bots. So we made an agreement with uh, Quadency and other companies. So it's a network of, of tools and, and data that traders can utilize Excellent. to do all their trading with Dash in the heart of it. So that's, that's taken a lot of time. We just released, I think it was last week, the series of education uh, components. And this is really cool. Uh, Omar Hamwi has done a great job uh, leading that. What this means is that, you know, we're talking to an exchange that is done very good in arbitrage and asking them, hey, write a piece with us about how arbitrage is working with you with Dash. And then we're talking to this bot company, Quadency, and asking them, hey, how does your bot work? How can a trader utilize it? So it's we're basically building a network there. Very nice, and and uh, also uh, I heard that you've been on uh, in Venezuela for for a couple months now. So tell us what's what's happening in Venezuela. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, you know, first of all, I'm 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 doing good. I'm I'm in my parents' house. So I came in March to Venezuela for what was going to be two and a half weeks of work. We were going to announce on March 15th, I think, or the, the 17th, I think it was a Monday. We're going to announce the partnership with Megasoft that is the largest points of sale company that serves all the large merchants in Venezuela. The, the EPA, which is the, the kind of like the Home Depot, Excelsior Gama, which is kind of like a uh, Whole Foods, uh, and, and many like that. So they work with this company and you know we integrate it uh, with them through crypto buyer so you know this is a project that has had been in the works for about two years and it was finally going to come live so then I came here to you know meet some of the people on the ground and Megasoft and then lockdown happened 
So it's been not a couple of months, it's been 10 months already, but it's been very interesting because I've had to see firsthand what is happening in Venezuela. So number one, the opportunity for cryptocurrencies is massive. There are huge problems, not only with inflation, but with payments. Every time you talk to somebody that is not a crypto person, a regular person, they have problems paying, you know, um, you, you've heard a lot probably about how the dollar is, is common everywhere, but the problem is that there are large notes, you know, there are 100 bills, the 50 and the 20s, there are not so many fives and ones. So if you go, for example, a few days ago, I went to a bakery, I bought a bunch of things and I needed to pay $16.3. So I took out my 20 and they were like, uh, I don't have change. So I was forced to either buy more or accept a piece of paper, which is what I did. Yeah. So I have laying around somewhere a piece of paper that says John the Baker owes Ernesto 3.4 or whatever dollars. So that's a big problem and it happens everywhere. That's why with Dash, we started to see some real issues solved. Among all the time that I spent here, I've been working a lot with the teams on the ground. I don't know if you saw back in March, I had a meeting with about 20 something people from yeah. like seven or 10 of the teams here. The spirit is great. They still love and want to work with Dash. So, you know, we've continued to get together and cooperate a lot. One of these cooperations is we have the Church's Chicken contact and we made a, we asked Church's Chicken to make a specific promo that costed six and $10. And we had Dash help there to sell Dash to the people. So it was a massive success. They sold more than a thousand combos over a weekend. And now we're looking to replicate this everywhere. And how this uh, correlates with everything else we're doing is now we have Megasoft and CryptoBuyer onboarding large merchants. And we know that when we make it easy for people to get Dash, they will use it. So now we're putting them together and we're building more ecosystems around the large supermarkets, around what's coming up next, you know, with, with, with toy stores, with hardware stores, with more supermarkets. And this is all building. And this is only that. Crypto Buyer has been doing an amazing job. They not only signed up Megasoft, but they signed up Pizza Hut. They signed up a chain of hotels in a, in a touristic island. So we can see a lot of the ecosystem growing and you know you see binance working everywhere here you can also see a lot of all other communities doing stuff you see you know th there's there's guys from uh, other coins uh that, that are you know working here in yeah. different places so all of this is because in venezuela is not you know something that you want to speculate and today everyone's happy about bitcoin being twenty thousand dollars but it's also about how can you solve problems. So it is good to see that uh, in uh, many parts of the world, people speculate with crypto, and that is one use case. But in Venezuela and places where the economy is broken, people want to see how to solve problems, and we're up working on both use cases. Um, I, I have here on top of my desk as a reminder, when I was in Venezuela in 2018 shooting that documentary, this is the Bolivar, it's no longer in use, but this is a, a, a two Bolivar bill, and in the back, a, a 10,000, uh, 100,000 Bolivar bill. Uh, yeah. and, and this is just a reminder that, you know, people that watch the documentary, they saw me on the gas station, that's the half of the pile, the other half I gave it away. And, and just to let you know as well, yeah, I was in Brazil a couple months back, and I was going through my parents' stuff, uh, uh, and I found my mom's house deed, and she had a stack of money that she got paid in the 70s that uh, I have here uh, that she's like, well, this is worth nothing. I got paid and like a week later, it wasn't worth anything because once this came out, this was Des Cruzados, Cruzeiros. Yep. Let me see. This is Des Cruzeiros, right? But yep. it came out from the central bank with the stamp saying, now this is worth one cent. Yeah. So yeah. from 10 to one are you, are you showing it because your camera is off? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm showing, I'm showing, I'm showing on, on the recordings appearing here. Yeah, so okay, cool. there, so there's a stamp there of one. So this is this is how this whole thing 
uh, uh, came to be just a piece of paper, you know, and, and people don't realize it. And it's gonna happen again to majority of the countries, and it's it's quite quite, quite sad to see this happening. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Talk, talk, yeah. go ahead. Just to give you a reference, when I arrived here, and, and I will try to go there again and take a picture. I went to have a hot dog in Caracas, and uh, they were at about a dollar. So I paid 70,000 bolivars, 70,000. Right now, $1 is 1,080,000 bolivars. And this is just between March and December. Yeah. So uh, that's why people are interested in Dash and crypto here in Venezuela, because once you learn how to move money away from the toxic bolivars, you can start you know, not losing that much money just in the exchange rate and then you know if you add the payment components and if you add the capability of you know getting loans and and you know paying people outside and getting paid from outside so the opportunity is still massive uh, and and you know uh despite 2020 having stopped uh a lot of things literally for about four months uh, there were still some great advancements. Uh, Dash Mall not only continued working and, and signing up more merchants, they signed up a delivery company that is accepting Dash. And now if you're in <clears throat> the States or Brazil and you have a family member in Merida, you can pay with Dash without you know having to pay $50 to the bank for the wire. So, you know, we're, we're moving forward. It's, it's great to see that every day we have more meaningful stuff happening, more projects coming together. When you were here, it was mostly mom and pop shops yeah. and smaller cafes. Now, if you saw my Twitter, there's large supermarkets like Excelsior Gamma, plus the mom and pop shops. So while it's, it's not a straight line up, it's more like this, but you know, we've seen a lot of growth and uh, I hope that, uh, that, that you know, people can find massive amounts of people can find in Dash and in crypto solutions for the problems they face because that is real adoption. And when you put that on top or next to the speculation, this is what crypto is going to be about. It's a you know peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. I remember when I was there, one dollar was two point eight million Bolivar, the old Bolivar, not the, the, the Bolivar Soberano. But I think ended up getting to I think three and a half million believers for one dollar, even more, right? Yeah, and and you know it's interesting because if you want to convert that into current believers, you have to eliminate five zeros. So if it was five three zeros, point, exactly, they made it very difficult, right? So if you know if if we're talking about today's believers, you're those three point five million are thirty five believers. Soberanos. So 35 of the new Bolivars was the price of $1 when you were here. Then it went up to 70,000 when I got here in March. And right now is 1,080,000 of the current Bolivars. So um, a, a few days ago. Uh, out of control. Out of control. The government has absolutely no monetary control. Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting. Uh, another big. Uh, thing that we did this year, we finally had the chance to uh, be listed on local cryptos, yep. and we did an university tour. We went to uh, digitally. We went to four of the largest universities here in Venezuela. It was full house. We had between fifty to a hundred people attending every conference. Students are very interested in crypto, and it's funny because one of the professors was talking about you know uh, infinity. What is infinity? And they said, well, a uh, dollar can cost infinity. And just this example that you and I were talking about, if it goes from 35 to 70,000 to a million, it has no cap. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. And tell us a little bit about the game industry, as you mentioned in the beginning. So wh what's up with Dash and the game industry? Yeah, well, that, that's another vertical that we're evaluating and working on. And, and it's to a smaller uh, amount of, of time because we're a small team. There's only three people of us in business development. So we're working on remittance projects. We've been working for a long time uh, to enter the remittance corridor between Mexico, uh, I'm sorry, between the U.S. and Mexico. 
And also we're enabling Venezuelans to send money from other countries into Venezuela. Uh, these projects are very slow because there's a lot of regulation involved and you have to make sure you know that all the KYC and all the components are there. And the other component is gaming. We've dedicated some time to gaming, not a lot because it's a lot of resource consuming. You, it's, uh, we found that many of the, of the partnerships and stuff are a bit more expensive and, and more, more far-fetched. But one that we did found and we started working with was Ready Raiders. Ready Raiders is basically a dashboard where you can see and have an account of all the uh, raids and all the tools and things that you get during a game. So the the the, the founder is a gamer. So he, he he saw himself, you know, writing a lot of things on a piece of paper, and he was like, "Well, how can I automate it?" And then he brought the idea to us, and we started working with them. And you know, it's it's grown from literally zero to thousands of users. I think they have over thirty five thousand uh, users. So that has proven that. You know, when you have a good problem, a, a real problem, and you have a good solution, then people will use it. And how is Dash involved in it? Well, Dash is the way that you can buy and sell some of the tools that you find from other, other players. And Dash is the prize that they win when there's competitions and we're a main sponsor there and people have Dash wallets. So that's another vertical where we have found that real use grows a lot of awareness and a lot of transactions. So, you know, we have this strategy that is working really well, and uh, soon we're going to add the Dash platform on top of our growth strategy. So we're very bullish about everything that we've done, and we think, you know, soon we're going to see more and more great news for Dash and from Dash. Excellent. Looking forward for a fantastic 2021. Once again, uh, Ernesto Contreras, thank you very much. I appreciate your time.